Change the behavior of different staffers. Parker allows you to change. Just to speak briefly this evening about the UK and its responsibility and about the UK resident who is not here tonight, Chaka Onga. If people ask you, why is it Chaka Onga isn't back? Another good question to ask back is why is Guantanamo still there? The answers are very similar. If you make yourself read, which is a hard thing to do, but if you make yourself read the memoirs of the Prime Minister of the time, Tony Blair, it tells you everything you need to know. He reminisces and says, when I saw the pictures of the Twin Towers, the planes going into the Twin Towers, I understood everything. I saw it all. I saw splashes of colour that I had never realised were pre previously joined up. Were all one colour together. Kashmir, Palestine, Algeria, Yemen. These were the enemy. He defined them, defines them, continues to define them to this day as the enemy, Islamists, political Islam huge sweeps of groups and people, political interests, religious interests, all together made the enemy, an enemy who had declared no war, but upon whom he declared war. And so, if we want to begin to think how a devout Muslim, Shaka Ama, who belonged here, belongs here, is still there, the answer lies in that. Because from then on, for 10 years, led by that thinking, the thinking that defined our foreign and our domestic policies, led by that, our government successively have done everything in their power to collude with the concept of Guantanamo. They've lied, they've cheated, they falsified evidence, they fabricated evidence, they colluded in torture, they colluded in arbitrary, unlawful, indefinite detention. Crimes against humanity. Crimes against humanity for which they could and should stand prosecuted. And if they, if they were prosecuted, you could be sure no government would collude again in the same way. Guantanamo could never have perpetuated itself, never, if it had not had the endorsement of countries around the world. But the primary endorser was this country and our government. And if you see finally disclosed grudgingly litigation, email traffic within the cabinet at the time, the first days, the anniversary, this grotesque memorial we're having to hold today at Guantanamo opening. At the same time, the internal email traffic within the cabinet, Blair, Straw, Blunkett, the longer they go there, the longer they stay there, the better. This suits our purposes the UK's national security purposes. For my part, I don't want them to come back. But at the same time, meeting the families, looking them in the eye, saying we're doing all that we can to get the boys in bed back to Mr. Beck, his father, or to Shafiq Brasil. The Americans will tell us nothing, but the email traffic saying, Keep them there in Afghanistan just a week longer before they go to Guantanamo so MI5 agents can interrogate them there. And so they did Shaka Arma in the freezing cold of an Afghan winter, disused aircraft hangar. 
and then sitting in frozen positions as if they were frozen, stress positions, and able to sit there day after day and patrolling along the reservoir, two by two, in their North Face jackets, bricks. They saw it all, they heard it all, the torture. They were there to get the pickings for us, for us. So Guantanamo, when they say, and they will say, we can't get Shaka back, this is what they said about Moise. Can't get him back. What they said about Bisha al-Rawi and Jamil al-Bana, who were not British nationals, we won't get them back. And they said it and said it until public pressure compelled them to get them back. But Shaka, who was disadvantaged, he had no lawyers for many years in Guantanamo, no lawyers here. So at the very moment, the pressure is too great and Binyam Muhammad comes back here at that very moment. Our representatives are sitting down with the Americans and with the Saudis to get Shaka back to Saudi Arabia from one form of indefinite tension to another, another form of unlawful, totally unlawful future for him. That's what we colluded in. So if you ask anyone, what did you do? What are you doing to get him back? And they tell you, we can't, it's difficult. The Americans won't let him. Don't believe a word of it, not a word. And the new coalition government came in, softer term, muted language. We're going to do all, our, all that we can to draw a line under the past. They have done nothing. They have achieved nothing. Next week, we have what is called an e-petition, a device which if 100,000 people sign up to it, the parliament is obliged to have a debate. When that is published, I ask everybody in this room to ask everybody they know to sign up to it. February the 13th is another terrible date. It's the date when Shaka Anna was moved from torture in Bagram to torture in Guantanamo. On that date, February the 13th, he will have been there for 10 years in Guantanamo. And we could have got him back. And we can get him back. 100,000 signatures to a petition is nothing. By February the 13th, we could get 10 times that. And then, could this government say, we can't, we won't? It will be a demand from the nation that we do. And be sure, if we can't get it, our closest ally, the Americans, saying, we won't. And what is that? It's a declaration of war.